Hello everyone, I am Ben with the BTC Sessions. I'm here checking out Canmore and Banff Canada. And today I'd like to speak with you about a couple of the ways that I think Bitcoin may evolve in the coming years. Right now, we currently have a contentious debate going on about how to scale Bitcoin. And I think there are a few possibilities about how this could pan out and how it could drive um, where Bitcoin will evolve to and what it will become. Now I'm going to kind of focus on two forks of, of how it could go. Uh, one is we won't scale at all. and will basically maintain the status quo and the other is if we somehow through some mechanism manage to scale the network. All right, so let's go with option number one. Um, if we manage to not scale at all, if we basically stay where we're at and Bitcoin is not able to be changed uh, because uh, the consensus is never reached. So in this case, I think what would end up happening is Bitcoin would just end up being a store of value. I don't think it would go away. I think it would still be here, but it would just be primarily a store of value. Basically a hedge against inflation and just a way of having your currency out of the current banking system. Um, now, I think if this happened, if we stuck with uh, just Bitcoin being a store of value, then we may see another cryptocurrency step up and take the place of a digital cash for simple, easy transactions. Um, but I think there also is another possibility here. I think uh, what we could see happen is that companies step in and uh, and they basically create networks on top of Bitcoin um, to facilitate easy change. Um, so you would have the main store of value, which you could hold yourself, but you could also have networks on top, kind of like uh, gold ETFs, where you can um, a little bit more easily transfer value between them and hold shares so you don't you're not actually holding the physical gold um, same thing you would have places like coinbase where they would hold your funds you would leave the security side to coinbase and you would just kind of step back and say okay well well i trust this company i trust this entity to keep the value for me um, so you'd have an option of both but using using uh, other entities to hold your value may be attractive, I'd say to the majority of people in that case, um, especially uh, the kind of the mainstream users of Bitcoin, uh, should it go that way. So in this case, what you kind of get is that we've restructured the base of our monetary system, but uh, we've kind of at that point built another banking infrastructure on top of it, which is better than the system we have right now. We have a very centralized um, monetary supply um, and then we also have centralized entities on top of it delegating uh, transactions and, and how we're allowed to transact with each other. So we would still have those entities perhaps watching the transactions and and allowing what can happen which is not ideal but the monetary system itself is decentralized so you have a sound base money so you know this is not my number one choice of how things pan out but if that's the way it goes, then um, I would take solace in knowing that number one, we've we've redefined the monetary base and made that better, and two, that perhaps another cryptocurrency steps in and takes on the role of that digital cash that may fill the needs of uh, of that kind of role for other people. Okay, now the other possibility here is that we do achieve scaling. So whether that be through segregated witness and then lightning network, or whether that be through side chains, or whether that be through uh, Bitcoin Unlimited and uh, making changes to the, the core protocol of Bitcoin, whatever it may be, let's say that we do achieve scaling and we're able to allow people to transact um, instantly peer to peer as, as was envisioned initially, um, and it's quick and it's cheap, okay? So if that happens, if that happens in the, in the next year or two, and we are able to do that, um, number one, Bitcoin and, and cryptocurrency won't all of a sudden I don't think it won't all of a sudden be accepted overnight everywhere, right? That's just not how things work. I think it will help along the way and it will help things uh, move along a little bit more quickly, but I, I don't think that's, that's you know, gonna spur on all of a sudden, oh, we have scaling, oh, now everybody uses it. I don't think that's how it's gonna go. Um, I kind of see it happening in three stages. Number one, 
Bitcoin, it, the first stage here is speculation. Uh, so many people use Bitcoin as a, a, uh, a tool for speculation. All right, they're speculating on what the price is going to be tomorrow or next month or next year, um, but they're also speculating on the value of the network, whether that be through a store of value or a digital cash. People are speculating on whether Bitcoin will be a success or whether the network will crumble, um, you know, in the coming years. So they're, they're longing or shorting it. If enough money flows into Bitcoin through speculation, then I think down the road, as more capital flows into it, um, and it, you, over time it proves that it has staying power, it will become a store of value. And I think we've already started to see this here um, with uh, Bitcoin recently going uh, reaching parity with an ounce of gold. I know that's a very arbitrary unit of measurement um, because uh, one Bitcoin and an ounce of gold, I mean, there's no real relation between the two. Um, but that starts to put that thought in people's heads that, oh, this is, you know, look at the charts. Over time, it's been steadily growing. Um, you know, the value's been going up. And, and over time, yes, it has its ups and downs, but it, you know, it does consistently seem to trend up. All right, um, it's it's a solid store of value. So I think that's next on the docket. I think we're going to see that people start to see this as, oh, this is a store of value. It's a hedge against um, other markets, and I think that's where we're headed next. Now, if we successfully scale. If speculation leads to people seeing Bitcoin as a store of value, I think the third and final stage would be that with this stability and um, predictable deflation that people start to look at Bitcoin and say, okay, well, this is a viable currency. If enough money is in the system, then you won't have these wide, these wild price swings up and down. It'll start to stabilize a little bit, and all of a sudden, people will be saying, "Well, I'm I'm not worried that I'm going to spend my money and it's going to be worth twice as much in a month, or I'm going to save my money and it's going to drop in value at, by half in a month." If it stabilizes and it starts to not swing around as much, then people will start to trust it and use it as a day-to-day -day currency because it's a little bit more stable. So I think this would be the final step um, as we kind of go through this evolution of Bitcoin if we manage to scale it successfully. First of all, I, I want to say that um, it, it could go either way, but it could also be a hybrid of what I've talked about here, or I mean, there could be other possibilities that I'm not thinking of. Um, I mean, the fact remains, I'm just a guy, <laughs> I'm sitting in a room, uh, and, and these are just kind of my opinions. Um, but I think the fact that people are able to actively not only discuss, but debate and influence um, where our currency is going is incredible, because that's something that was inconceivable just a decade ago. You know, you had to sit there and, and say, well, this is what the Bank of Canada is doing. This is what the ECB is doing. This is what the Federal Reserve is doing. And, and I have no influence of, over that. I can't even vote on it. Now we're actually in a place where we get to discuss and potentially influence where our currency goes. And we also have the option of, if we don't like where it's going, we can vote with our feet and go use something else because there's more options out there. So. I, th I think that that alone is an incredible step forward. And if Bitcoin, for whatever reason, can't achieve consensus and we don't scale, it will still have a huge, huge role to play as a, as a store of value that is just unable to be changed by anybody, that is resilient, um, that is immutable. I think it already plays a huge role that there and that alone is worth investing in. Um, I do think that if SegWit is not adopted, I, I also find it very unlikely that Bitcoin Unlimited would be adopted. I think that um, there's a possibility that we could do segregated witness and we could scale with bigger blocks as well, but um, I, I don't feel that if, if one doesn't go, I don't think the other will either. And that's just my opinion. But anyways, I, th I think honestly with 
proven resiliency and as people become more familiar with it, um, it will continue to grow. If it scales, it will serve as a currency. If it does not, it will serve as a store of value. And those are kind of the two paths that I see us approaching. Um, of course, as always, I'd love to hear what you guys think. Um, what do you think are some other possible paths for Bitcoin? Have I missed something? Is there another possibility, another road that we could go down? Please comment down below. Thank you guys so much for watching. Please don't forget to hit like and subscribe, drop a tip if you're able to, and share this video. I'll see you guys next time on the BTC Sessions.